tonight. Um, I think probably in about half an hour they're supposed to announce um, who won the presidency. This area, particularly like the east of Congo, is pretty united for Kabila, who who was the president before the election. There's like a huge police presence today, and then like saw you know lots of it seems like more. UN and like people kind of cruising around than, than normal. We drove by the police station and there were like hundreds of police officers out front looking like they were getting like prepared to go out. We're not really expecting there be much trouble because I think people will just be celebrating. It's pretty exciting for people because it's a, it's a really big, big day for Congo. We're just waiting to see uh, if we hear anything. If people are celebrating or if they even announce it tonight, we have a radio. In a few minutes, they will give the general results uh, of all of the country about elections. They say in Bukavu, Kabila is the first. How many presidential candidates for you? They were 33, and today they will start between all of them, the one who succeed with uh, many voices. Uh, and until now, they just keep on quiet, and wait for it. About the elections, the winner was supposed to be announced last night, um, but I guess as it turned out, we kind of fell asleep waiting because it took a really long time for them to announce, but no one won. So I guess with this um, system, you need to have a majority, so they're gonna have to vote again. So they won't know the winner for another long time, so. The first general election in 46 years had remained undecided in the DRC. Despite the hope that a stable government brought, violence against women continued to be a part of life in the East. In addition to their work at Ponzi Hospital, Robin and Wendy began to focus on building relationships with the victims of rape that they had met through the Ponzi Church in Bukavu. My day today was kind of interesting, I guess. Um, we ended up going to see the women from the Ponzi congregation to have like our first actual meeting with the women there who've been raped. The Ponzi Church helps them um, just like in whatever ways they can, just with like clothes and and um, things like that, but I mean, the people in that congregation don't have tons of money, so it's not like these women are, you know, getting all sorts of free stuff. Like, it's an incredibly tough life. We're at Ponzi Church right now. We're just waiting for the women to come and then start. And then we start. Yeah. How old do you think I am? I'm African and I'm a Yeah, yes. You can be 13 years, 16 years. She doesn't even 15. <laughs> How old do they think I am? 18 years old. Wendy and I, I think, both kind of didn't really, um, like, didn't really know what we should do. You know, it was kind of like um, a challenging thing to like think about and like try to have a plan and stuff like that. But some women just kind of ended up sharing their stories with us, and we got to. Um, talk to some of them just about just some details of like um, what's brought them like where they are and just some of the um, struggles of their lives now. And they took me, four of them. They raped me. I was living with my brothers. All of my brothers were killed. I just remained with five children. 
It's just a life. You go and you beg on the street. Please help me, help me. That's the life that I'm having right now to beg people to give me something. When they finished that, they told me to lie down. Eight men. They raped me. When I came here to Lemera, because uh, some part of my home came out, and I had the surgery and they removed. I don't have my house, I don't have anything. All the wealth that we had and Teram took. Sometimes I feel like I'm nothing before other women. Sometimes I realize that if I could die the days they were raping me, maybe that would have been better. I couldn't think, like it's hard to process like what you're hearing. My thing is being able to like relate to people and like I seem to always have like some kind of experience or something that can that can relate. I was raped too in college, but it was like nothing. Like not even a drop in the bucket compared to like what these women have gone through. I want so much to fix your lives, but I know that that's not anything that I can do. I know that that's only possible through God. And maybe God working through me, or maybe God working through someone else. So I'm so sorry that I, I feel like I don't have anything to say that's going to be helpful. The only thing I can do is come here and read God's Word. And I go home at night and I pray to God that's enough. And I really have, I really have faith that that is enough sometimes. And maybe sometimes the only thing we can do is cry out to God and, and pray for Him to let us endure one more day. We just saw so many trials. Families don't exist anywhere. Our husband died, died. Just suffering. Our crimes cannot just be finished. But only God can help. Jesus will wipe our tears. Despite the tragedy that they had endured, the women at Ponzi Church held fast to their faith in God. Although Wendy and Robin had come to help these women, they began to learn more about themselves as the relationships that they were forming continued to deepen. Through their stories, they would see that faith, in spite of sorrow, can exist regardless of the circumstances. Pense-moi, ma forteresse rose, les dieux qui tremblent jamais. Ma vision est brève, ne peut pas dépasser. It's all about um, somebody who's asking God to think about them. Mm. And um, they're trying to show the suffering that is going on mm. around the world, refugees, people around Africa, all over the world. We have a chorus that. Um, because that's Raisi uh, Shamaisha, that means God uh, make our lives to be a little bit easier because it's really tough. I think um, uh, Robin and Wendy know what I'm talking about. Life is very tough in Africa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that's, that's, that's what the song is all about. Okay. Thank 
pichide no fiste de vida, mongo en tu.